um, printing and how to actually do it uh, in a way that's actually going to improve your customer experience. Um, so I do have a short agenda. We're going to talk just about some basic concepts of printing application development. Even if you've developed um, applications with printers in the past, it doesn't necessarily mean that you know, you know all the ins and outs about what it is to actually work with a printer and um, some of the, the details that are good to know ahead of time so that you can actually um, best utilize the printers um, when you're actually doing development. Uh, and then we're going to talk a little bit more about the best practices and actually how to code an application um, in order to use those best practices. And then we're going to talk a little bit about the validation program and tell you how uh, we can help you out um, in a uh, more detailed fashion to really um, improve your customer experience. Um, so there's a couple of goals, learning the basic co concepts of developing printing apps, um, familiarizing yourself with the best practices that we recommend, um, and just introducing you to some of the terminology, and then talk a little bit about the uh, validation and whitelisting programs. So this is a very wordy app, and I apologize for that. Um, essentially, we're talking a little bit about some of the, just the basic terminology here. When we talk about ZPL, which is a common term that we throw around around at Zebra when we're talking about printers a lot, um, ZPL is the Zebra programming language. Um, this is a you know sort of one of the the you know acronyms we use very commonly, and I figured it'd be good to actually describe what it is. It's a printer control language, um, so that means that um, it's used primarily to actually format your actual printouts and, and tell the printer exactly what you want to print where. Um, it's also used for doing things like setup and getting status and um, those kinds of things as well. Um, we do also actually support a number of other languages in the printers, um, but we do tend to recommend using ZPL for a number of reasons that I'll go into a little bit more later. Um, ZPL command is a you know specific in instruction um, in ZPL language that um, is used for any number of things like configuring, um, actually creating a, a print la a label format, um, and getting you know status information. Um, one example is the caret b8, and the caret is actually part of the command. Most ZPL commands either start with a caret or a tilde. Um, and B8 actually tells the printer to, you know, print a EAN8 barcode. Um, and there's commands in there to have it print any number of different barcodes, text and images, and any number of different things in there. Um, but also things like getting your status. So there's a number of different use cases for having the ZPL command. Um, another concept that we tend to talk about a lot is the ZPL format. Um, and this is a more general concept for being able to actually create a ZPL form that has um, dynamic data in it. So it has variables that you can fill out later on um, and so that when you're actually creating, you know, when you're creating your application and you know you say you're printing a shelf label uh, for retail, um, you want to, you know that you're always going to be printing the you know, the product name in one spot, you know you're going to be printing the barcode in another spot, and you know you're going to be printing maybe the company logo in another area of the uh, label. Um, in that case, a lot of times the, uh, what we tend to recommend is to actually use what we call a ZPL format. Um, so that basically says, put specific types of information in specific areas, and then um, when you recall that format, um, all you have to do is tell it what format to use and the actual dynamic data that um, you want to fill out those times. Um, some of the other things for ZPL, um, we do also have the ability to encode um, and read RFID tags using ZPL with some of our Z, uh, RFID printers. And um, we have a specific set of ZPL commands just for doing that. Um, they also provide exception handling for RFID. Um, another command set that we commonly use and talk about is the SGD command, um, or set get do. These are a set of commands that are only used for being able to do printer configuration. Um, what we mean by that is actually just setting up the printer. So doing things like um, setting up all the wireless access um, to setting up the Bluetooth to 
doing things like setting the print speed um, and setting the actual control language, um, which the command that's in the example there is for setting the control language to ZPL. Um, so these commands are used, generally speaking, um, either by somebody who is doing initial setup of the printers or in your initial stages of your application to make sure that um, the printer that you're talking to is going to handle the data the same way um, as a different printer. Um, so that the printers all work, you know, essentially the same out of the box. Sometimes you have to do a little bit of setup on them. And the second do command uh, set language is one way to actually handle that. Um, and then the best practices document is uh, essentially a basic document that we've got online um, showing, it, talking about what our recommendations are for um, best practices. So to go into a little bit more detail about what we mean by formatting and control languages and all that kind of stuff, I'm going to give you a little bit more of a, showing you a little bit more uh, detail on the layers of control. Uh, when we talk about ZPL, uh, that's like what we consider a formatting language. There are a number of them that are within the print, you know, within the printer or can be loaded into the printer. Um, and they all handle, primarily their main focus is doing actual printing. So creating your actual print job and you know doing the printing aspect of it. And then we have uh, configuration languages, which are the second do's. We also, you can do configuration with uh, JSON or uh, SNMP. Um, and those are your, your setup, um, being able to set the, you know, the wireless control and set the settings for you know, print languages and print speed and that kind of thing. After that, we have a layer called, um, that we're calling ZBI or data manipulation. This is a way for you to potentially actually put a you know, small basic program into the printer and have it take in data, format it somehow, manipulate it somehow, and send it on to the formatting engine to actually print something. Most common use cases for the ZBI engine in the printer is doing things like hooking up a scanner directly to the printer or a weight device or um, a special keyboard to it, taking in you know whatever was scanned or whatever information is coming from those devices, and manipulating it to actually create a label that gets printed. And then you know a number of different communication protocols that we you know can handle in a number of our printers. Not all of our printers handle all of these communication protocols, but uh, many of them actually do handle um, a good subset of them. Even our mobile printers ha uh, all have USB. Many of them have um, either wireless LAN or Bluetooth. A lot of them also have um, Ethernet through a cradle. Um, so lots of different options there as far as how you actually will do your communication. And then sitting outside of that is your application doing the actual control um, of the printer. So this is just a little bit more talking about the communications and how um, you know different printers may have different types of communication uh, protocols that they'll handle. Um, and just because you're using a mobile device to communicate to the printer doesn't mean that you can't be talking to a uh, one of our large tabletop or desktop printers, um, and vice versa. If you're using a, a desktop computer, it doesn't mean that you can't be talking to a mobile printer. Um, but this is one of the more common use cases for it and a number of different interfaces that we have for that. Um, we also, in many of our mold printers, have what we call a multi-port radio. And that um, single radio handles both the 802.11 uh, and Bluetooth. And then um, many of our printers now have also what we call print touch, which is basically an NFC tag that can be read to um, either go to our website or launch a application to um, you know, give you the ability to essentially do a tap and pair or tap and print um, so that you can actually communicate with the printer without having to do a whole lot of extra setup on it. Um, talking a little bit more about the formatting languages, um, this is an example of having three different formatting languages, three of the more common ones, which is ZPL, CPCL, and line print. Um, all available on most of our mobile printers. And the actual formatting languages are, you know, different in the way that they're um, actually, you know, what commands they're using and how they're set up. Um, 
but in the end, most of the time, that you can get a fairly similar label out of the experience. The differences come when you're actually trying to do things like um, printing graphics or getting statuses from the printer or doing things like internationalization where you have um, where you want to use a, um, a font that is from you know, a, a larger command set like Chinese um, and you want to be able to print those characters generally speaking you're going to want to go to the ZPL command language for that because it's going to handle that much better and easier um, than the uh, than the other languages that we have currently going One of the other concepts that we like to talk about is um, actually getting the printer status. Um, our printers are fully capable of alerting you or telling you about, uh, through the SDK, about multiple different uh, statuses and issues. So say the um, door is open to the media um, or there's no media in there, it's like run out, um, or a number of actually other uh, status issues that might come up. The, through the SDK, um, you can actually get access to information about most of those different status conditions, and we tend to recommend you actually alert those, alert those to the uh, to your end user. Um, in part because one, if you're sending information to the printer, it's not actually able to print it. Uh, you do avoid data loss for for doing that, um, depending on how your app is written. Um, obviously, if it's not set up properly, then you're not always going to be able to print correctly. And just this generally good user experience to tell the user when it's when the printer is actually having a problem, um, as opposed to letting something wrong happen and having the user have to deal with it later. Um, we find in our testing processes uh, that we have um, when a number of developers will send us our apps, send us their apps to test that we do have a good number of them that actually fail for a number of different reasons. Um, some of them just you know, end up crashing on certain of the area cases like um, printers off while you're actually trying to print. But more commonly, um, there's just a failure to print. Usually speaking because um, some, of, you know, some of the basic setup like the print control language isn't set up properly on the printer. Um, so some of our printers come out of the box um, with uh, one um, print control language, and some of them come with a different control language. Um, so being um, in your app, you really do want to set that up ahead of time before you, um, you know, while you're in your app, because you don't always know what printer your customer may be using. And that gets us on to the multi-platform LinkOS SDK, which uh, we have uh, available in uh, uh, Java for Android, in Objective-C for Xcode, and uh, Xamarin. We also have a PC-based one as well. So on to the best practices. Uh, we do have a number of best practices that we recommend, and this is based extensively on the testing that we've done with our partners over the course of the last two years, um, where you know they'll, they'll come to us and we'll test their app, for validation, which I'll go into a little bit later, but for a number of different reasons, um, you know, the certain things that we test will will end up failing. A lot of times, it's because the printer just um, the app doesn't necessarily interface with the printer as it's out of the box. So they'll say, "Okay, I want to whitelist it on a IMZ320 printer," um, or they want to you know validate on an IMZ320 printer, and in their office it worked fine, um, but a brand new printer out of the box, it does not work on primarily because they've done a little bit of setup outside of their application um, in order to get it to work and you know their customers don't always have that pre-set up on there. Um, so that's one of the things that you want to do in your application is make sure that um, you're essentially you know working from a printer that is uh, you know out of the box basically or at least you know, set up to factory defaults. Um, another thing is stability. Sometimes we actually see that when um, the printer is off or unreachable or if there's an error in the printer where it can't actually print, that the application that um, is trying to print to it actually will freeze or crash 
or uh, have a number of different issues with it just because the, um, the developer wasn't necessarily thinking about the fact that um, printing is essentially a, um, a really detached activity and you know the printer may very well be you know having an issue when you're trying to print to it. Um, so you have to keep that in mind that the printer sometimes does turn off, especially you know depending on the setup, it could certainly turn off you know at any time. Um, but you know power saving modes that we have in there. Um, printer can run out, run out of paper. <laughs> they do all the time. That's part of the issue with the printer is that it runs out of paper. Um, being able to detect that kind of an issue and handle it is a major um, a major stability issue that we've got. Um, things like being able to actually have good print quality on the printed output. Um, some of the other things that we're going to recommend um, go directly towards actually having good, uh, good acceptable print quality in your um, in your printed printed application or your printed uh, format that you're doing. Um, the uh, part of it is checking the printer language, so making sure that um, if you want to print in line mode, that you set it up to be in line mode. If you want to print it in ZP, print something out in ZPL mode, that you actually set it up to be in ZPL mode. Um, and you know any of the different languages that might go around that as well. Um, another thing that we've mentioned before is checking the printer status. So just making sure that the printer is in a good state before you actually send a print job, and essentially, oftentimes after sending a print job as well, so that you can ensure that the print job that you sent didn't cause a problem. Say you know you were printing to it, and halfway through the print job, it actually ran out of paper. It happens. Um, so being able to check the printer status after you print is also a useful thing. Um, displaying those er error statuses, um, we consider that good practice because um, the user doesn't necessarily always want to have to look to the printer to figure out what's going on. Um, being able to just display you know, in your application a basic communication about what's going on with the printer, um, especially when you're actually trying to print to it, um, is generally considered you know, so much more useful to a lot of customers who are dealing with that application. Um, and then if you're actually using Zebra branding in your application or in your website, um, use the proper Zebra branding. Um, and we do have uh, links to the gold brand, brand standards uh, as well. So some of the reasons why we recommend ZPL for label formatting um, are that we are actually, you know, ZPL is the language that we're really actually adding new features and functionality to, um, and a lot of the um, bug fixes and that kind of thing are also primarily being focused into ZPL. Um, so some of the other features that are really more focused for ZPL and are really much better in ZPL are um, barcodes. We have a much greater range of different types of barcodes, especially 2D barcodes. Um, in ZPL than in CPCL um, internationalization. So you can actually um, set it up to uh, use you know, TTF fonts that are standard fonts and use you know, full um, UTF-8 encoding for, for your um, characters. Um, so you can actually print um, a number of different languages like um, Chinese or Arabic and that kind of thing. Um, Lots more graphics conversion tools and graphics tools in ZPL, um, and actually the, the fonts um, and the, the ability to handle multiple different fonts in ZPL is much uh, greater than in some of the other languages, um, and allowing for better status checking. Um, one of the other recommendations that you might have guessed from some of the other things we're talking about there is we do recommend you only print graphics when necessary. Um, when we say that, we do see a lot of our developer community um, essentially creating um, applications and sending down a image to be printed, uh, whether that's a PDF image or a PNG image, and the actual full label is within that image. Um, and while it is oftentimes easier to do that, do it that way from a developer's perspective, a lot of times we find that it really doesn't always print out as well as people expect it to. Um, there's a lot of risk for distortion. Um, a lot of times, because of the way that the graphic is created, um, barcodes can be you know, messed up or distorted and, and become really unreadable. 
Um, plus, the, the files are actually very, very large oftentimes, which means a much slower time to print. Um, so we tend to recommend that uh, if you, obviously, a lot of times there are images that you do want to print, like, like logos or signatures, um, that you generally will want to store those in the printer um, and then recall them at the time of print um, as part of your ZPL format. Um, creating your label primarily in ZPL as, as a format really r reduces the chances for there being any um, issues with the printing. And you, you always are, are reasonably certain that you're going to have the same printout come out every time um, on, a on a Zebra printer. So I'm going to go a little bit more into coding and how you actually create an application that follows you know, our, our best practices. Um, and there's a couple of different steps to this, and this is a more generic application. Um, first thing you're going to do is um, discover your printer, select your printer, somehow get, you know, get access to the printer that you want to use. Um, discovering printers is how we descri describe um, the act of if you want to give your users the ability to um, choose from a list of local printers. Um, so say you can do Bluetooth discovery, um, which will allow you to display a list of uh, Bluetooth, local Bluetooth printers, printers within you know, a certain range of the device that you're on, um, and so that your user can pick which one they want to use. Um, same thing with uh, network discovery, uh, that you can actually um, find local printers or find um, printers within you know, a certain range or certain net um, that you specify and have the user pick that. Or you can simply do what we have in the application on the right here, um, have a box where they can scan or type in an address uh, for the printer. Um, either way it works and are good options for you, but uh, you know, keep in mind that there are a couple of different ways of um, selecting the printer and, and getting access to it. Um, and then opening the connection would be your, your next step to that. Um, next thing we tend to recommend is set up your language as ZPL. Not all of your printers actually do have ZPL as a print language option, um, but most of them do. So one of the things that you're going to want to do is to actually, you know, do a little bit of setup on the language and check to make sure that the, the language is available on that printer. Um, and then if you've got other settings that you want to set up on there, do it that time. Um, at that point, then you can actually start actually following your app process where, you know, if you've got dynamic data, say you're, you've got a application where you've got some fields to fill out or you've got a application where you're pulling data from a database and using that to print something out, that's where you would actually go ahead and do your, you know, dynamic data capture. Um, and after that, that, that's when you start actually dealing with um, the format. So you're going to want to make sure that the, if you've got a ZPL format, that you actually do send that and store it on the printer. Um, and if you've got any images like logos, you can send it and store it on the printer. Um, also, you know, if you're doing a signature capture, we also have a process, a process we recommend for doing signature captures as well. Um, and those would be also pushed to the printer at, at, you know, at this point, usually speaking, as well. Um, then we're going to recommend that you check the status. Um, and after that, it's a matter of just printing it, which basically is oftentimes recalling the EPL format and printing. Check the status again to verify that your printing went well, and then close the connection. This is based on um, a article that we have in, uh, in our knowledge management site called uh, Getting Started with Android Development. Um, so that's what this application is here on the right. Um, and you can find the, uh, the, the uh, white paper right in here. You can also find the actual code in the link down here as well. Um, essentially, it's, a, uh, it's an application that you know, does show you a lot of the different uh, functions that you need to do to um, have a good, uh, stable application that we tend to recommend. So I'm going to go through a little bit of the code of it. I am not going to do what uh, Billy did la uh, last month and actually code it in uh, in real time because that's um, absolutely crazy. <laughs> and uh, you know, I'm sure I'll get something wrong if I did try to do that. Uh, so I'll go through the code here. Um, 
this particular page is the, the basic printing um, from a, a, a greater standpoint. So when you hit the print test button, this is what it would actually do. Um, we got a, a connection which, um, in this case, I pulled it out to just be in the Bluetooth connection. And it's going to pull the field from the, uh, the text box here um, to get you your MAC address for the printer. Um, and that establishes a new connection. Uh, then we're going to go ahead and open it. And if it's connected, um, then we're, at that point, we create a what's called a zebra printer object. Um, and this gives, the zebra printer object gives you access to things like being able to check the status and do some of the, the formatting types of things um, as part of our SDK. Uh, this is all using the LinkOS multi-platform SDK to do it. Um, and then I've got a couple of functions in here. So we're going to set the printer language as EPL. We're going to store the format. We're going to get the status before we print. And if it's all good, we're going to print the format. And we're going to get the status after the print. Um, and there is a function to you know, show the status as well on the top of the page here. So if there's any problems, then we, you know, we say that there's an issue. And after all, everything is printing, then we go ahead and we disconnect. Um, so checking the printer language is a little bit more complicated than you might expect, um, especially if you want to really verify that the printer is um, going to be in the language that you really want it to be in. Um, so in this case, we want it to be in ZPL. Um, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to get the current language uh, of the printer. That's the first line here. Um, and uh, then you know, we're just going to show it up at the top of the screen. Um, if the language is actually uh, is not currently set to ZPL, uh, then we do go ahead and, and we set it. And then we pull the language again. Um, and that's because we actually want to verify that what we set was actually um, set up on the printer. Um, in that case, then, we have a couple of different error cases to show, you know, if it does, con if it is part of, if it is ZPL, then we want to actually state that we changed it to ZPL. Um, and if it's not, then, you know, put a couple of error messages in here saying, you know, what, what is actually wrong with it. Um, Store format is actually a fairly simple uh, command. And it's basically, you know, in this case, we're assuming that the format is actually a file um, on the device. You could also have it as just a basic string that you send uh, using the uh, connection.write uh, method uh, to just send a ZPL string to the printer, um, which is probably how most of you are actually printing now, just using connection.write and sending uh, sending a, a ZPL string to it. But this is another way of doing it where you can actually just send a file um, as, a, as a format. Um, and that'll st just store it on the printer. Nothing will actually be printed at that point. Um, once you've actually gotten the status, then, and you want to actually print your format, um, this is where, you know, if there's a field, if there's a text box to get, um, to get the, uh, the, you know, get a name or get some information, then that's that, or you can, you know, fill it in some, some other way using your database access or whatever you're trying to do. Um, and then we've got a format name, which I've got listed up here as well. Um, and in this case, uh, there are a number of different ways to handle uh, printing a format. Um, but one of the more you know, easy ways to handle it is to actually create a um, hash map and put your variables in there. And in that case, then you can actually just print the stored format using this command. So and Robin, can I, uh, I wanted to interject here real quick. We had a question from someone, and this is kind of a good place to ask it. So they were curious, does the application developer need to understand ZPL, CPL, CP, or line printer mode languages, or is there an API available which creates the format for them? Uh, Yes, we, we do. Um, for ZPL and CBCL, we do have an application that is freely available online on the zebra.com website. Uh, it is called Zebra Designer. Um, and essentially, you can use that application to create this file. Um, and it's, a, it, it's basically an ASCII file that you can then um, 
either install with your application or have you know push to the device some other you know side loading or however you want to have it um, on there. Um, and it is essentially a GUI that you can use to actually do your. Uh, let me pull it up real quick so you can actually take a look while I'm sitting in here, and then I'll go back to the code. And it's called Zebra Designer. And uh, I got a nice, nice label format in here that looks like a wristband. That's probably one of the last things I was working on at one point. Um, and Obviously, I have a lot of printers in here. So in this application, basically going to drag and drop information as a GUI. And I can put a picture in here if I wanted to. Let's see if I got a basic picture in here. Yeah, zebra. And I can put barcodes in. And, but you can also actually put in variables as well, which is what I was talking about with the stored format. Um, and size these however you want. So this is essentially one way to do it. And then you would export that. Um, this file uh, using the, the file commands to export this um, and you get a text file out of that that you can um, put in your application um, or put into your uh, your device to actually work with it. Does that make sense? That's great Robin, thank you. And I was able to post uh, your response and a link to that uh, within the question section so hopefully people can see the direct link to be able to download Zebra Designer. Okay, that's cool. Um, so moving on, um, and that's that's primarily most of the ZPL that you that you'll really you know if you're u using ZPL or CPC, that's one of the few things that you'll actually um, work with that. Especially if you're doing something like um, once you're actually printing, you can use the hash map, which in that case you don't even have to know if it's ZPL or CPCL, um, as long as you've got your you know whatever your format name is that you want to actually print. Um, the hash map and the uh, SDK with the print stored format will handle um, send, you know, creating the print job correctly for the printer language that you're using. Um, so another uh, thing here is getting the status. And again, this, this makes no difference whether you're in CPCL or ZPL or line print um, modes. Um, and it's basically you get the status. And depending on the different status, you're going to want to actually show that to the um, to the user to say whether or not it's going on. And generally speaking, if the printer is in one of these you know, conditions, and there's actually more than what we're showing here, but these are some of the more common ones. Um, but if it's in one of these conditions, it's generally speaking not going to be able to actually print at the current time. Um, so that's one of the big reasons why we actually recommend to show this to your user, because if they hit the print button on your app and nothing happens, they're going to get pretty frustrated. Um, so being able to actually show them, oh, hey, you know, media is out on the printer, that's like something that is really helpful to them to be able to say, oh, okay, you know, need to put more paper in there. It, it really enhances the user experience to be able to do that. Um, and it's basically run off just this one, you know, command to get current status. Um, and this get current status, you can call it multiple times uh, throughout your applications to, uh, as long as you've got a, a open connection. Um, on your zero printer object. Uh, this is um, after you're printing. Um, this is one way that we recommend to actually check. Um, this is a, to check to see if the print job actually, you know, was handled correctly, and you actually did have a a good print sent to the printer. Um, so this is a status the you know getting the number of formats in the receive but buffer is basically saying do you, are you currently still working on a print job um, and um, if it's equal to zero then it's not currently still working on a print job and then the status because sometimes if it's still working on the print job and it runs out of paper 
yes, it's still working on a print job. It still has it in the buffer, um, but it's not currently ready to print because you know the, um, the paper is out. Um, or if somebody popped the print head in the middle of printing something, again, you get the same kind of thing where um, there's still something in the buffer, but it's not currently ready to print. So at that point, you're going to want to tell the user that there's something going on there. Once that error is corrected, say you put more paper in the printer, or you close the print head, um, then generally speaking, the printer in most cases um, will continue and finish out printing what it was printing before. But being able to tell the, the user that <laughs> everything went all right um, is another you know, just good best practice to it. Um, so that would be uh, the case up here where it's just basically saying the print job was sent um, and otherwise you got some errors in there. And then I'm just talking about how to disconnect, so checking to see if the connection is null and if it's connected then close it. Um, so there are a couple of Android specific recommendations um, and the, the um, the best practice that we talk about um, on the first line here about the UI thread is actually common to both Android and iOS um, in that when you're actually communicating to the printer, um, when you're actually, when you have an open connection, you really want to do that on a separate thread from the UI thread. Um, so that's, generally speaking, you're going to want to create a separate thread for being able to do communications with the printer um, and handle all your communications on that. You could potentially open up multiple, you know, have multiple threads, but you're going to want to have a separate um, uh, connection object for each thread. You're not going to want to handle the same connection on multiple threads. Um, so you're going to use the async task in in, um, in uh, Android to do that. Um, printing a large image, you know, there are occasionally some issues that you're going to want to run into. You're going to want to watch out for. Um, so you might get an out-of-memory error, out uh, error exception. Um, so just keep that in mind that there might be problems with printing out large images. Um, and adding the JAR libraries to your project libs directory, um, just making sure that just makes sure that um, the uh, the different libraries that we are providing to you are you know all going to be available to the application when it needs it. Because um, with uh, Android, we do provide not only um, our own SDK is a jar, but we have several third-party jars that we use within our SDK to um, enable a number of different activities. Um, and I'll be, um, most of you guys should know this, but if you are you know, still using Eclipse IDE, Android is you know, has definitely changed gears and said they want you to use Android Studios, and they're not really supporting um, Eclipse for doing Android development anymore. And then if you are developing an iOS application, again, uh, you definitely want to do all of your um, communication to the printer on a separate thread. Um, and again, um, when you are using that connection object, you know, you're, if you are having multiple threads in there, you're going to want to use the connection object on a single thread, um, if that makes any sense. <laughs> all right. So I want to talk a little bit about validation. Um, we do have a, hey, Robin, a program. Go Robin, ahead. before we dive into that, we had a couple other questions on oh, sure. some of the code that you had gone through. So okay. let, let me ask these. So the, there, there's one, is discover mandatory? It is not. If you know the, essentially the address of the printer, if you know the IP address and, um, of the printer, or if you knew the Bluetooth MAC address of the printer, um, then you do not need to do full discovery. Um, you can make a connection without having that. Um, and in fact, in the code I've got here, this is basically creating a Bluetooth connection object using just the MAC address rather than doing the discovery. Um, and this is a way of, you know, certainly a way of doing this. Um, it really depends, especially if you've got something like a scan and pair in your app where you've got a, a, a field or if you're using the EMDK for Android and have the, the scan and pair functionality going on there, um, you can then, you know, do the pairing using those, um, using those APIs or using, you know, just the text field and scanning it in um, 
with that or having the user enter it in just by typing it in um, and have that connection um, great, at least get that MAC address that you need to create the connection object. Um, you can also use NFC touch. So we have um, quite a few of our printers now, we have NFC tags. So you can pull, um, we have in that NFC tag of the Bluetooth MAC address, the um, well, the LAN, um, wireless LAN um, MAC address, uh, oftentimes the Ethernet MAC address, depending on the type of printer. So a number of those different addresses to get uh, open that connect, um, connection um, are available in that NFC tag that you can read. Does Great. that uh, answer your question? Yes, thank you, Robin. Um, we've got a bunch of questions coming in. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to focus in on the ones that are specifically about the SDK, because I know that next okay. you're going to talk about some other uh, things. So here's a question. Is Bluetooth, uh, the Bluetooth connection insecure uh, function supported in KitKat yet? That is a very good question. And I do not know the answer, but what we can do is we can get back to you on it. So my understanding, Robin, is that we have tested the SDK with Lollipop uh, and down. So you know, I believe that you know all of the Android, uh, everything in Android was tested with KitKat and Lollipop. Uh, but we can we can double check on that as well. All right, so let me look at these questions. Um, so there's one here on, does the SDK cover developing apps for Android 10 business or via USB connectivity? It does um, cover USB connectivity. Um, Android 10 business, I do not believe is currently covered, but it does um, cover USB connectivity. Um, so, so Windows 10, so you said oh, Windows, Windows 10. 10, so that would be our PC Java SDK uh, via USB, and the answer is yes. Yes, yes. Um, for, for Windows 10, now if you're looking at the mobile Windows 10 versions, um, we do not fully support that yet, but for essentially PC Windows 10, uh, we do support that with the, uh, the Java PC SDK. Okay. Um, here's a question. How long uh, can a Bluetooth printer be connected to a mobile computer on when the printer is in idle? Is there a timeout after which it will be disconnected, and how does the application get notified if the connection is lost? There is a timeout. Um, if there is no communication happening, um, by Bluetooth standard, I believe it's 20 minutes that the connection will remain open. The printer also has a timeout where it'll power down, um, which is a, a different, or power down or go into sleep mode, which is a different um, different timeout. But if the printer is on, um, by Bluetooth standard, I believe it's 20 minutes, um, and the connection will then be disconnected. Um, in that case, generally speaking, um, you're going to want to use the connection that is connected to verify that the connection is is active. There is no actual notification, um, and that's more um, because Android doesn't really have a whole lot of um, support for that at the moment. All right, um, and some of that, you know, we do have on the ZQ500, there's a Bluetooth timeout as well as the printer uh, going to sleep, so those are other things to factor in. Um, well, you got a lot of questions here, Robin. Um, <laughs> can I pair multiple printers and establish a connection to different printers at the same time? Yes, you can, but we do recommend to probably throw them all, um, each connection on a separate thread, make it a little easier to uh, ensure that you're not, um, especially causing Android to, um, you know, kill off threads because it, uh, you know, thinks you're using too much much bandwidth on them. Um, so generally speaking, each connection is probably best to be handled on a separate thread. But yes, you can actually open up multiple connections or to multiple printers um, uh, in Android or iOS. 
And then this question wasn't asked, but I did want to also say that a printer, one individual printer, can only maintain a connection to one mobile computer or smartphone. Over, over Bluetooth, Over Bluetooth. Though. Thank you, you. Yeah, a printer can actually handle, most of them can handle uh, eight connections to, to network, um, network devices. Um, or eight separate um, network connections to a single printer. Uh, but Bluetooth is only a single connection. OK, so we have three more questions. And then I'll actually let you finish your presentation. So sorry okay. for interrupting. No um, so there's another follow-up question on the Bluetooth connection in Secure. So it says, looking at the API, I can see there is a Bluetooth connection in Secure that does not require a pairing. Is there a contradiction to this method of connection? Um, Bluetooth, a Bluetooth connection insecure is useful if you are, you know, if you've got the printer set up as a um, lowest security mode and um, you want to have the simplest form of connecting to the printer. Um, generally speaking, it's you know useful for you know small customer um, small customer deployments um, where you know security isn't as much of a concern. Um, the Bluetooth connection allows you to do the pairing if you actually have higher security modes uh, enabled on your um, on your handheld device as well as your printer to enable the um, Bluetooth standards for encryption and pin pairing um, to make sure that you're actually um, holding on to both devices at the same time. So say in these case where you've got an application in a retail space and um, you, uh, you know, you're, you're trying to, say, do even just um, uh, you know, printing and doing shelf label and you want to, you know, connect to a printer to, to print off a shelf label in retail, um, Okay, so you've got your, your MAC address. Um, in that case, if you've got a MAC address, then generally speaking, you probably know that that's the printer you want to print to. Let's say you actually did discovery. Um, and you, you, know, you went ahead and you, you did your discovery and you found a bunch of different devices. Bluetooth discovery in Android isn't always going to be very clear as far as whether or not you've got a zero printer or if you've got somebody's iPhone in the next aisle. Um, so while we have actually improved, you know, the, the newest SDK that will be coming out fairly soon will have improvements to that. The currently released SDK actually, you know, will get you all the Bluetooth devices in the area. In which case, you might actually get somebody's iPhone in the next file or somebody's, you know, Android phone in the next file. And okay, so the user doesn't necessarily know what they're doing. They click on that device and they jump to connect to it. Um, they're going to have issues. Um, plus the fact that if somebody actually um, wanted to hack into it, it would be fairly easy to do that um, if they knew that the connection was insecure for your particular app. Um, not necessarily always going to be the case, though where you really have to be concerned about it, but I've seen certain use cases where you want to allow for better, um, better security, better encryption um, that comes with pairing with Bluetooth. Um, so it, it's really up to you which way you want to go and what your use case is. But I don't consider it a contradiction to have multiple different use cases for um, doing the connection either with or without pairing. Great. So Thank arguments. you, Robin. Thank you. So there's two last questions. I'm going to make them quick here. So is there an SDK for .NET development? And the answer for label receipt printers is no. But for our card printers, we do have uh, C -sharp .NET SDK. And then the last question was, which platform do you recommend for iOS development? And on that, you know, we, we offer two options, um, whether native development uh, through our LinkOS multi-platform SDK or through Xamarin. And that, I would really say, is more up to the developer and their use case on which is going to meet their needs better. Uh, but I want to turn this back over to Robin because she had a couple things, and one of them was to go a little bit more in with the iOS area because um, there are some things if you're posting an app to iTunes we wanted to highlight. So I'll turn it back over to you, Robin. Okay. Um, 
so some of the we do have a couple of different options for um, verifying that your your you know if you want to work with Zebra to actually verify that your app is uh, working to what we would consider best practices um, and is um, and get some help with marketing um, and you know have you know have more a deeper interaction with Zebra. Um, there are a couple of things you can do. One of them is the validation program where you can essentially submit your app to us and um, you wouldn't really be submitting your app fully to us. It would be more a matter of um, we would work with you to create a test plan and through that test plan and working with you, we would verify that your app is actually following our best practices and um, you know, once you've gone through that and, and we actually found a number of our developers to do this, um, end up actually having to, you know, fix issues that we found in their app that um, you know provide a much better experience for their customers. So some of the benefits are just enhancing the app quality, um, driving deeper engagements with us, which basically means we can identify, you know, which one of you guys is really, you know, doing good innovative apps that we want to um, talk to about in our sales community and our marketing teams to um, promote uh, through those teams and um, provide, you know, because you're using best-in-class features, um, you know, doing some of the using some of the, the tools and features that we've got, um, we can really help you out with that. Um, and through that, we can you know provide uh, better better promotion uh, through um, both our you know through our website and through you know sales and marketing. Uh, we also use you know if you're willing to submit your apps to us, we also use those apps in our interoperability testing when we come out with new products. Um, so it's another benefit to us and to you that we can verify that um, prior to actually releasing a new product, you know, we've tested on your app and we know it works. Um, so this is just talking about the, the new program that we've got, the Partner Connect program. Um, and it's a single um, unified program um, where there are a couple of different options as far as how you would, you know, work with us in that program. Um, where you're only doing printing, but you're, say, using a non-Zebra handheld device um, or smartphone, um, or if you're doing, you know, using both printing and using our mobile computers, um, or if you're just using mobile computers, um, different ways of, of working with us, but we are providing one sim seamless way of, of actually um, communicating with us and, and working with us on that. Um, and we have, you know, streamlined and common templates for actually doing testing of this stuff. Um, and the benefits and promotions are the same across um, if you're, you know, whether you're working with the, you know, primarily with the printer team or primarily with the enterprise team. Um, and there's are some emails that you can, uh, if you're interested in actually doing the, uh, going through validation, there's some emails that you can contact us at. Uh, I will send this out to you guys as well. And I would also add on to this, you know, if you're interested in doing the validation, we would recommend you go to, if you're a Zebra partner, to Partner Gateway, and there's a web form that you can submit a request through there, or you can go to our developer portal at developer.zebra.com, and there's the Global Solution Center tab, and you can find links for how to connect with us through that. Um, the other... A uh, quick thing that I want to talk about right at the end here is um, whitelisting, which is a primarily an iOS concept. Um, so many of our printers um, are um, MFI, which is made for iPhone, which you know for Bluetooth connections. Um, so if you are submitting an app to the um, App Store or to the B2B Store, um, and it's trying to communicate Bluetooth to a Zebra MFI printer then you might very well have to actually, you will actually have to go through the whitelisting process. So essentially, if you try to submit it to, to Apple um, without, you know, talking to us first, they're going to reject it. Um, and they'll say, talk to the, talk to us about, um, about whitelisting. Um, and in that case, then you're going to be pretty upset because you just tried to submit an app and they, you know, it failed. So one of the things that we recommend is to, you know, if you are submitting an app that's doing Bluetooth to one of our printers to contact us, and we will walk you through whitelisting, which is a basic testing uh, of your app to verify that um, everything is actually working per you know some basic standards that we've got. Um, and we do this in 
Apple um, is basically doing this because they don't have all of the Bluetooth devices on hand to test with. Um, so they actually put push that um, testing uh, portion of their you know their their validation onto the actual device de um, device companies device developer companies. Um, so if you're trying to do Bluetooth to a, a headset, you're going to have the same issue um, with with Apple. It's not a zebra thing. It's an Apple um, Apple process. Um, so we do have. Um, links in here as far as resources and um, some information on what you want to do if you are planning on doing one of these. Um, and like I said, it's a very basic, you, sub, you know, you let us know what your application is um, and we will then, you know, do a, a testing process on it um, to validate that um, your printing is happening properly and we might re main, make recommendations for best practices, um, but some of them aren't necessarily going to be required all the time for whitelisting. Um, and um, then, you know, if you pass the testing um, or if you go back and, and make the changes that we recommend for that, um, then we'll, we'll be able to actually then post it to um, Apple to verify that it has been whitelisted with us. And that is all I've got. Run on time. Excellent. So I can probably take maybe one more question. We that was all the questions that have been submitted. So if anyone else has a question, please uh, please submit them, and we can ask Robin real quickly. Uh, but really, I wanted to say that was great, Robin. You gave us a lot of great information. Uh, we will make sure that we we've recorded this and we will post the video of it. So if anyone uh, you know wanted to catch up on what was reviewed. We'll also post the slides uh, as well, and that's going to be on developer.zebra.com under the developer events section. Um, and so I guess no other new questions. So the one last thing, oh, we just had one question there, but you know I did want to let people know we do have, there's a survey at the end uh, when you disconnect from the, the webinar. We, we love your feedback. We really want to know how we're doing and what else you want to see from us. So please, uh, if you can give us that feedback, we appreciate it. Um, so let's see. So here, here's your last question, Robin. I saw in the forums there was going to be an update to the printer MIB towards the end of last year. Is this available now? Um, to the LinkOS uh, MIB, I do not believe it is posted online yet. I will get back um, to um, open that question up again with the team to get it posted um, because I know it has actually been asked for on a number of occasions um, but my understanding is that it hasn't been posted yet but I will verify that and um, try to get it pushed out there for uh, you guys' access. All right and he wrote back thank you. You're welcome. All right. Well, thank you, everyone, for joining us. I hope you found this to be informative and helpful. And we look forward to talking to you uh, June 1st. We will be having a card printer SDK review uh, focused on smart card encoding. And we are still working on our mid-June topic. So uh, more ideas, you know, we welcome them. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.